Hello and welcome back to another video showing you how to use our Canvas LMS or Learning Management System. Previous videos have shown you how to log in and use the various settings, inbox, messaging, and help. And today we're going to take a look at how to create and use modules as well as looking at how to create individual assignments for your students. As you can see on the page in front of us right now, uh, as of July 1st, 2014, a little bit of a change has been implemented by Canvas in the user interface. And what we can see right here is that our course status of published or unpublished is now very evident on the front screen. In order to publish your course, and by publishing, what we mean is that that allows the course to be visible to the students and once the course is visible to the students you will have access to their email so that you can send them uh, messages through the inbox or the canvas messaging system all you simply need to do is click on the button that says publish and when you click you'll get a system message telling you that the course was successfully updated and now the course status is published. If you would like to unpublish the course, this is now available with the update, and you would simply click the Unpublish button, and once the course is updated, you'll see that it's now in the unpublished state, and students can now not see the course, and you cannot send any messages to students. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about and create modules, and assignments and just a quick reminder that we mentioned that the links that are up on the black navigation dashboard across the top are what we might consider global links because you would be able to see all courses assignments grades and calendar that are part of any course to which you're assigned However, once you have selected an individual course, it would be best to use the links that are on the left side since they are the local links and will bring you directly into the grades, the discussions, etc. for this particular course. One thing we want to remind everyone is that all of the links on the left hand side, some may appear bold and some may appear grayed out, but they are all available to faculty at all times. So you should go down and find the particular link for modules and when you click on that, you'll see some information text that you can read about what a module is. We like to use modules to create some type of structure for the students. It's very important on online courses, of course, to have the students know exactly where they are in the course at any time. Uh, however, for hybrid and face-to-face -face classes, it's just as important to create some type of organizational structure for the students. And the modules could be something simple as one module per week, and you can name them appropriately as Module 1, Week 1, you could put the dates there, or because the modules are completely customizable by the instructor, you could create modules that are content-based. For example, word processing, electronic spreadsheets, database management systems, etc. So you have to decide what makes the most sense for you, your students, and your class, and you simply click on the Create a Module big blue button and just like that we can create a module. As I said we can name it anything we want and for this exercise we will simply call it module 1. Before we finish right here just want to call your attention to the two check boxes that are available. You can lock a module until a given date so that if you do not want your students to have access to a module for any particular reason I could lock this module until for example October the 1st and when the students are in the course they will see the module that is there but they will not be able to click and access any material until that particular date of October the 1st. Also, since we're going to add individual elements into the module, if you wanted to keep the students moving through them in a sequential order, you would simply put a check mark into this box, and that would require that students check the individual items in sequential order. 
I'm going to click add a module and just like that you can see we have module 1 give you an idea of what's here on this line as I go across module 1 the first thing I see is this little gray area that's supposed to resemble a cloud and with the new draft state that Canvas has made available to everyone as of July 1st this module even though the course may be published the module and the associated assignments can be in a draft or unpublished state so now even though you've published a course if you create modules and assignments you will need to publish each one of those individually by clicking on the little gray cloud the plus sign says that I would like to add items into this module but for this demonstration we have yet to create any pages quizzes assignments etc so there's nothing to add when you get to the gear icon the options are edit or delete because you may want to rename this module you may have misspelt something and you can certainly click edit or you can go ahead and click delete if you wanted to get rid of the module again for this demonstration we are going to create multiple modules so I will again click create a module this one will be called module 2 you can see that the two check boxes are still available as before but now because we have more than one module something here is in the center and it says that before I will allow students to view this module if I want I can define specific prerequisites probably something in a previous module so I can make sure that the students have done something in module 1 before module 2 becomes available if you want to explore that on your own of course you can always check the help uh, system as well so I will go ahead and add that module and we have the same icons so that's pretty much it for creation of modules and again we have nothing to add so we're going to move forward and now we will look at how we can create assignments if we go to the left find the appropriate link for this course for assignments I will click on assignments and here we have uh, an assignment group with the default name of assignments and we can add as many assignments into this group as necessary at this point we normally ask you to reflect on your particular course and if you are one of many faculty members who create various groups of assignments and weight them differently for example homeworks is a group and may be worth 10 percent of the grade essays may be a separate group and may be worth 25 percent of the grade and you can go on and on and create all of the various groups and percentages and since the majority of the faculty do do that we will show you how to create those various groups for this demonstration we will have two groups of assignments one will be called homeworks and one will be called essays as you can see we have a default name here called assignments and again as I come across <clears throat> I can see that I can add assignments to this group but I really don't even want this group to be called assignments so I will click on the gear icon and edit this and now I will call it anything I want in this case I'm going to call it homeworks and then I will <coughs> excuse me then I will click save and now it's called homeworks uh, we said that we would like to have two groups of assignments <coughs> so I need to add yet another group and I can see here that there's a button that allows me to add an assignment group And when I click that button it says what do you want to call it and we said that we would call this one essays and click save so we now have two individual assignment groups and again we did this because a lot of faculty members like to have multiple assignment groups and wait the groupings for the final grade in order to wait these instead of looking at the gear icon for the individual group I need to look at the icon or the gear icon for all of the assignments and when I click on assignment settings it says do I want to wait the final grade and if you just simply want the grade to be accumulated by 
all the assignments are in one group and it's total number of points earned divided by total points possible, you don't need this step. If you do, though, create multiple groups and want to weight them, I would simply put a check mark. The groups that you've created show up and I can come over here and decide what the various groups are weighted as. I will make this one 20 percent, I will make this one 80, and you can see that it keeps track for me so I can get to a total of 100 percent if that's appropriate. I could have multiple groups here. I could also have a group, for example, called Extra Credit Work and have that be worth 2% of the grade. And I can put assignments into that particular assignment group. And as many assignments as the student performs, and no matter what they earn on all of those assignments, it would never be more than 2% of the total. And in fact, the total could be 102% because there is extra credit work. So if I've chosen my assignment groupings and my weights, I will simply click Save. And you can see that now the weight of the group does appear next to its individual group. And if I wanted to, I can keep adding groups and changing the weighting. So now that I've got my groups set up and I've determined if I will or will not weight them, I will now go ahead and add individual assignments into these particular groups. I will add an, uh, an essay assignment into the essay group. So if I come across from the group, I will simply click Add Assignment to Group, and it pops up and says, what type of an assignment? So I will show you with the drop-down the various options that are available. Starting at the bottom, there is a Not Graded Assignment. This would be any assignment that you want to show up on the assignment list. You would also like it to show up on the calendar, but you do not want to give a grade and you do not want it to have a column in the grade book. An example of a not graded assignment could be read chapter two by next Thursday. It's an assignment for which there's no grade given. External tool we currently do not use with Canvas, but the possibility exists for external tools from various publishers and if that becomes available we will certainly advertise that. A quiz. It's possible to create a quiz within Canvas which would the student would take online in Canvas, be self-scoring and the grade would go directly into the gradebook. The quiz questions can be created by you by creating them and typing them directly in Canvas. You could create them in Microsoft Word or you can import a test bank from one of your publishers. If you have an interest in that, please get to us here in the online learning department and someone will be able to help you with that. A discussion is where a student could read a particular prompt, whether it be a case study or a particular assignment prompt where the student would then have to type into a text box his or her response to that particular question. You could also make it a threaded discussion, meaning that once a student responds, other students can respond directly back to that student, and we will create one of these in a few seconds. So that means that if I have not mentioned anything that you consider an assignment up to this point, Canvas will lump everything else, if it's not listed here, Canvas lists everything else in this one group called Assignment. We are going to call this our first essay, since this is going into our essay group. So this is the name of the assignment that the student would read. We need to give it a due date, so we can click on the calendar icon, find the appropriate date, and simply click on the date. When I've selected a date, I have default time of 11.59 p.m. on, in this case, August 11th. If I wanted to make it earlier in the day, I can simply type in the appropriate time here, and when I'm ready, I can click Done. How many points is this essay worth? We will make it worth 25, and now I need to click on More Options. When you go to more options, you'll see that you have a text box because right now the student only knows that the assignment is called first essay, but they have no information about the essay. And here in the text box, you would tell them what the essay consists of, what they need to read, 
uh, how they would up format it, whatever information you would normally give to the students, you would go ahead and click. And I'm just simply going to ple type, please type the essay as directed in class. Hopefully you will be doing a lot more typing here to give the students some idea of what it is they're going to be presenting to you. And don't forget that anytime you have a text box on the right side of the screen, we have three tabs of links, files, and images. If you wanted to link something in the text box to one of the files that you had previously uploaded or to a page that you may have created with learning objectives or anything like that. As we scroll down the page, we'll look at the rest of the options. We are now just checking the point value, which assignment group this assignment resides in, how are we displaying the grade. When I click the check dial, the little arrow there, I see that points is the default, and if I want the Canvas gradebook to calculate a final grade for me for the course, it will only calculate a final grade based on assignments that display the grade as points because the gradebook simply does points earned divided by points possible. If you wanted to use percentage or complete incomplete or type in a letter grade, you can do all of that, but that will not calculate within the grade book at the end of the course to a final grade because Canvas would not know how to handle those individual numbers. However, they're available to you, but we're going to leave this as points. How would you like the student to submit the work to you? By default, it's an online submission. Let's see what other options are available. Well, we can have no submission. This might be, again, something where the student is going to be reading a chapter in the book and you're not expecting anything from the student uh, in terms of uh, a submission. Online, we will come back to. On paper, indicates to the student, and of course, they're supposed to create something and then they should have hard copy and give that to you in class. And as we said, external tool we currently do not use. So for this exercise, we will leave it as an online submission, and you can see that the, there are four options that you can select for the student, and since these are checkboxes, you can check as many as you like. Text entry, if you check there, that means the student will be presented with a text box, exactly like the one that's up here that you've been working on, and the student would be able to type directly into the text box to create the essay. If you check website URL, they'll be given a box where they can type a URL for an appropriate website if that's what your assignment requires. Media recordings indicates that the students will be able to initialize a microphone or a web camera and be able to actually create media recordings as part of the assignment that you would simply click the play button and listen and or watch the student. This is appropriate for language classes, ESL classes, where you expect the student to actually uh, perform, uh, and you can judge whether or not it's appropriate for your class. The last option is file uploads, which I am going to put a check mark here. This indicates that the student should create the assignment and have an electronic copy of it, whether it be a word processing document, PowerPoint, Excel spreadsheet and they will upload that document so that you will receive it through Canvas and then you can grade it through Canvas. Be careful with the restricting of upload file types but if you only wanted a Word document let's say you could restrict the upload file type to simply DOCX or DOC uh, and that means that if the student attempted to upload anything other than that particular type of document, they would be restricted and be told that they cannot do that. So be careful when you check this off that you're uh, being appropriate with the various file types. If you had created groups within your Canvas course, you can make this a group assignment. And once you do that, you'll be given the options as to whether you want to grade every student individually, even though it's a group, or would every person in the group receive the same grade. Lastly, at the bottom, we can require peer reviews, and they can be, uh, you can have this assignment 
passed on to other students in the class for peer review and you can do that either yourself by actually selecting the students who will review this work or you can have Canvas automatically assign it to any number of students. At the bottom we see that the due date and we can check that. Uh, currently it's August the 11th. On August the 12th students would still see that this is due on August the 11th but currently because this is the only date I have they would still be able to submit the work late and if that's okay with you you're finished. If you want to restrict it and have it not be allowed after a particular date we will scroll across and you can put dates that it would be available from a date until a date and therefore the students would only see it at the beginning date and they could not submit any work after the date. When all is done we will simply click update assignment. That's the equivalent of our save button and now we can see that this is what the student sees. Here's the information that's presented to the student, how many points, here's the what it is you're expecting them to submit, this is the due date, and if you would like to add a rubric, this is the appropriate place right here. You simply click Add Rubric. You would title the rubric, and then you can go ahead and add every one of these cells has a little pencil icon so that you can edit every cell. You can give a description of the criterion. Instead of the word full marks, you can say what will earn full marks. And currently we only have two ratings, full and zero. And of course many rubrics use intermediate ratings as well. So you simply take your mouse, go between two of the ratings, go ahead and click, and it creates another area. And you can go ahead and decide how many points for each area you're keeping track of how many points there are in each of the criterion and hopefully the total points would not be different than the points for that particular assignment. At the bottom here we can also check things like you want to use this rubric for assignment grading that makes it very handy for you when you're receiving the work and going through the speed grader application the rubric would appear and you can simply click on the various sections of the rubric the grade would automatically calculate and go directly into the gradebook for that student. I will not go ahead and finish this by creating, but I will cancel. If I had added the rubric, when the student sees the assignment, the rubric would be associated with the assignment and they would know exactly what it is you're attempting to get from them. So let's go back to the Assignments tab and we can see that in the Essays group we certainly have our first essay and you can also see that this has not been published so the student cannot see this assignment everything must be published in order for the student to see it so real quickly we will just create one additional assignment and that will be a discussion and we will put that into the homeworks category so I just go across from homeworks the plus sign says add an assignment and I want to add an assignment but this time it's not just a blanket assignment it's specifically one of those discussion types. I will call this student introductions. We will also give it a due date. We will also give it a point value and now again more options. You can see that the student sees the title. We would tell them exactly what to do And as we come down, we have only a few options when it's a discussion. If the discussion prompt is a case study, you could either have loaded it into the file section and put a link to it, or you can click the attachment and attach some reading material that will prompt the student for your discussion. If you want students to only reply to you, you're already set. However, if you'd like students to be able to reply to each other, we could click Allow Threaded Replies. This, this checkbox here says that users must post before seeing the replies, and that's up to you. If you would like the users to read everyone else's post first and then be able to post, you're okay. If it's a case study where you do want individual thought from every student, we would put a check mark and say that the user must post, then they can see everyone else's reply. 
not many people lately are using a podcast feed so we will uh, just go over that and this happens to be a graded discussion because we gave it 10 points but it could just be an open discussion it doesn't need to be graded either again if you have created groups within your course that could be a group discussion we can see that there's points possible 10 we want to display it as points which group is it in it's currently in the homeworks group and we can either require or not require peer reviews and again here's a due date and if we want to close it we would put until when I click Save I now see that what I have here is a graded discussion worth 10 points this is all the information the student would want to read and then they would be able to click once this has been published and they'll be able to type in their response so let's go back to the assignments and we can see that we now have a discussion you can see the icon is a thought bubble so a discussion is in the homeworks group an assignment which looks like a paper with the letter A that's the appropriate icon that's in the essays group and now we would like to place these assignments into the various modules so we click on modules and we see here that each module is sitting here with no items within the module so I can click add something to the module what do I want to add and again I have a drop down box had I created a quiz if I have a file that I want the students to read I can create pages which could be anything like the learning objectives or what I would ex expect from the students for this particular assignment if it were a discussion uh, and external URLs so I'm going to say I would like to add an assignment into module one and I can see that I have two assignment groups that I've created homeworks and essays but as an assignment only one assignment has been created and that's the essay so I will click on first essay I have the avail availability here or later to indent for readability and I would simply click add the item and here's the essay assignment as part of module one to show you what I mean by indenting I can come across on that particular line click the gear icon and say increase the indent and you can see it moved in slightly off of the left margin and I could of course go back and change that let's add something to module two I come across from module two add an item for this one I would like to add the student introductions discussion that we created so I need to tell it I want to add a discussion the only one I see here is student introductions that I have already created of course I could create new ones directly from here I say add the item and here I have module one has an essay assignment module two has the student introduction discussion but again none of this is visible to the students because they have not been published so I'm going to go ahead and click on the various cloud icons and publish the modules and publish the assignments if I go back to the assignment groups we now see that they're green telling me that they've been published if I go to the syllabus link the students would read whatever I have created for my syllabus but everything below the black bar here are assignments that have been created and published and notice that I did not place these here that's an automatic function of canvas as soon as you create an assignment it's placed on this assignment list if I've given it a due date it automatically shows up on the course calendar and if I've made it worth any points when I go to the gradebook it has automatically created the assignment as a column in my gradebook with the name of the particular assignment and how many points and because I created assignment groupings within my gradebook I now have the two groups homeworks and essays and it tells me that the homeworks are 20 and the essays are 80 so a lot of things are automated within canvas and everything should just flow evenly I hope you have found this to be very helpful and the next module we will 
allow you to sh view will be the gradebook. So good luck with your Canvas course and if you have any questions of course contact the Office of Online Learning or Academic Computing.